today, so I was looking over today's lecture, I, and I don't believe this will fill up the whole 50 minutes, so we'll have some time at the end. Uh, what I'll do is, uh, is walk around and just answer questions, kind of do a mini office hour of myself and the TA, so fair warning for the TAs here. Uh, we'll do like a mini office hour. Well, we might only have like 10 minutes or so, but if you have questions, um, we'll try to get to people and try to ideally get questions. If anybody has a question for everybody, uh, I'll be trying to watch the stream and get those questions too. But with that, uh, let's start off with that. Does anybody have questions to start off with? And I, and I assume most of you will appreciate a short, slightly shorter lecture today since that big homework's due, if anybody forgot, have, have that moment of panic. Oh, homework due. Uh, yeah, homework due tonight. So without any further ado, let's, uh, let's do this. So let's talk about JSON. For this lecture question, we want, I have a class. I'm going to provide the class for you. It's just a, a very simple class and uh, named store, which is going to have some inventory, some strings representing items that are going to be in the store, and how much cash is in the register. So two state variables, both set through the constructor. We're not worried about simulating the store, how the store works or anything. We're only concerned with two things, how to export an object of this type to a JSON string, and how to take a JSON string in the appropriate format, having cache and register with a double and inventory as a list of strings, and creating a new object of type store uh, from that JSON string. So if from JSON is called with that JSON string, take the values from the string and set whatever these values were, that doesn't matter, set these to whatever the values are in this JSON string, and then to JSON, I, I absolutely have to fix this one. Uh, as JSON, an important change. Oh my goodness, and I already uploaded the slides. I'll have to re-upload these slides. As JSON is the name of the method. have to fix this or else it will cause people massive headaches. What? Where? This one? That should be as Jason. That's what I'm changing. That's the change I'm making. I apologize for this. this. This won't take long. I'll, I'll have to double check this after lecture. Make sure I update that exactly right. Uh, but I changed it to as JSON for the lecture question. As JSON. So I should be live on the server if you update your slides. All right, so JSON. Let's write this method, uh, this class. We're concerned with these two methods as JSON, uh, which is going to return a JSON string with the information of the current state variables, and from JSON, which takes a JSON string in that, the right format and, uh, and populates these state variables. The format should be the keys being the variable names, and then the values being whatever values these store as either a list of strings or a double, depending on which variable it is, in the standard JSON format. So let's talk about JSON. We did this in 115. So just a quick refresher on what JSON is, what this format is. This is a, a standard format that is language independent. It grew out of uh, JavaScript, but it's used as a, a way to represent objects uh, as uh, represent complex data as strings, and primarily we use this to be able to communicate over the internet. When we're com communicating between two machines on the internet, those machines 
are probably running software in different, written in different languages, using different libraries, everything's different with these. So we want a standard common format to be able to communicate between them. Bless you. So we can communicate between them without having to worry about the specific language that they're using. So we're going to send everything as strings. Every language can interpret strings. So we'll send everything as a specific string and then send the data. We started off with CSV as a string format. That got us only so far. And then we had to switch to JSON so we can represent more complicated data. JSON is very elegant, at least in my opinion, in that it can represent very complex pieces of data with just six types. There are only six types in JSON. You can represent strings, numbers, which can either be integer or floating point value, Booleans, arrays, any list of values, objects, which are, are key value pairs, object, the name coming from JavaScript. Uh, it has that same name as JavaScript's key value pair, and null to represent no value. With these six types, we can represent very complex information. We did these, we worked with JSON in Python and JavaScript. JSON in both of those languages fits on one slide. Python, json.dumps, json.loads, the S for string, so dump a string, load a string to convert to and from JSON. JavaScript, stringify and parse, convert an object to a string, uh, to a JSON string and parse, take a JSON string and represent it as JavaScript types and JavaScript values, objects, arrays, etc. This is really easy in 115. Because these methods did all of the work. But what about Scala? So say we have this JSON string, and we want to represent this in Scala. We want to convert this to Scala types, and we want to be able to work with this. We want to be able to interpret these values as they, uh, as they should be interpreted. So we have timestamp mapping to a number, which is an integer value in this case. Message mapping to a string. And then ISS position. So this string is for the lo current location of the International Space Station. There's an API. You can ping the API to get the, a JSON string in this format, which tells you exactly where the ISS is at any given time. So the position is going to map to an object with two key value pairs, latitude and longitude, mapping to the corresponding latitude and longitude uh, as strings. Kind of importantly for this API, this API decided that those values should be represented as strings instead of numbers. I'm not going to question them, but we get this information with strings when we use this API, as strings, using this API. So we get those values, uh, we'll interpret them as strings and then convert them to doubles if we want to do any math with this Latin long. So this is valid JSON, but if we want to convert this to a JSON, a, a Scala type, how do we represent that data? How do we represent that information in Scala? Of course, just the raw JSON will store in a string, but when we want to actually work with the values and we want to parse this, when we parse this JSON, what type do we get? What type do we end up with? And how do we store that? Uh, so we have an object as our top level type. So our corresponding type in JavaScript would be a map. The keys in, J in JSON are always strings. So the keys in our map should be a string. But what should be the type of our values if we want to store this JSON object as a Scala, in a Scala data structure? Keys easy, but string, no, that won't work because we have, because we have uh, what we'll have to store in a long here. It's too much for an int. And we have another map. We would want another map of string to string here. So string, not going to work. Long is only going to get us that timestamp. And map of string to string is only going to get us the lat long. So we need something that's going to be able to store any of these types in our map if we want to use a Scala map. So we do have the any class. Everything in Scala is of type any. So we can store this in a map of string to any and store this information in there. Now we can store the long, the string, and the map of string to strings all in this map. This works, but it's kind of awful. Because now we only have the methods from the any class, which is almost nothing we can do. We can two string these things, 
Uh, we can check if they're equal to other values, uh, other objects, but that doesn't really get us the functionality that we want from these values. So if only there were a way we could mix types and not lose too much functionality. This is where we're going to use polymorphism. So this is a, a key problem where we need some form of polymorphism, whether we're going all the way up to the any class or using a different class that we'll see here. Uh, we have different types that we want to store in the same data structure. We have to specify a type, so we're going to specify some base class and extend that class for any of the applications that we need. In fact, we're actually not going to do that. We are, kind of, but we're going to pull in a library to do that for us, and we're going to use the classes defined in this library. So we're going to pull in the play JSON library. We're going to add this to our POM file, uh, download it through Maven, link it to our project, and this library is going to define the types. So instead of building that ourselves, that inheritance stuff, we're just going to leverage this library. This library defines types for every JavaScript value, uh, every JavaScript type. So the six types that we saw, that are six JavaScript types, those are all classes in this library. The JS string, number, boolean, array, object, null, those are all types in this library, and they all extend JS value. So they built this inheritance tree, JS value, extended by these six subtypes. And now the answer is clear. We have a map of string to JS value. We can leverage that polymorphism of the library. JS value is going to have all the functionality that all, any of these six values, all these six values need. And then we're going to use the, those methods in the JS value class to be able to handle our, uh, parse our data and handle it appropriately. Since they, the JS value class is going to define all the methods that we need, no matter which of those six types we're working with. And then as we have these JS values, they're going to have the methods to be able to convert to whatever type we need at that current moment without having to force it to be, uh, to be what we want it to be. So let's see an example of this. Oh, any questions, by the way? Let me take a quick pause there. Yes. Yes. So, so the map, the keys in the map are strings because in a JSON object, the keys have to be strings. That's part of the JSON spec. In JSON, for JSON objects, the keys in the in JavaScript objects, the keys have to be strings. Uh, so these have to be strings. So our map, it's only natural that it's going to be strings to JS value because just. That's what JavaScript says. Uh, that's what JavaScript says. That's what JSON says. The spec is the keys have to be strings. We can't have a JSON object that maps ints to ints, for example. It's just not valid JSON. So our keys are always going to be strings. We can take advantage of that and just have a map of strings here. Uh, with strings as the keys. Why are we using JSON? Why are we using what? So. Um, uh, uh, we can talk after lecture with that, um, but that's what we've been discussing. Do we need to include spaces when outputting for objective two in Rhyming Dictionary? Uh, no, no. Rhyming objective two. Which one is that? Was fine rhymes? Uh, is rhyme sounds? Uh, you shouldn't be working with spaces at all. Those should be removed when you're outputting from. That method returns a boolean. Why would you have spaces there? Expected this, actual this. That's not a question. Uh, okay, uh, so we have our map of string to JS values. And now uh, let's see an example of this, of using this. Uh, we're both going to read JSON and parse JSON using this library. So reading JSON. There's one big top level method that we'll use. First, we'll have our import of the library. And this one big top level method, json.parse, which is from the library. We're going to import this json from the library and just say json.parse and then give it a string, a valid uh, json formatted string to be able to parse. 
That's going to return a JS value. We don't know what type that is. I mean, we should know what type it is because we're following some spec. Uh, for example, this API, I don't want to revisit too much 115 stuff, but, uh, but just quick refreshers. The API is going to define the format of this string, of this JSON string. So I'm going to read their documentation. It's going to say, when you ping this API, we will return a JSON object with these three keys. The values of those keys will have these types. And I can follow that spec in my code and write my code exactly to that spec. So this method doesn't know anything about the spec, so we have to work, do some work after that. But we're going to get this response. It's going to parse it as a JSON string and return a JS value, which the library doesn't know what type this value is. But us following, reading the documentation, following the spec of whatever, wherever we're getting the JSON string from, we'll know what format it's supposed to be. So in this case, we know we're getting an object with timestamp, message, and ISS position as keys with a number, string, and object, where the object is string, uh, strings as values, latitude and longitude as keys. We know we're going to have exactly that, so we can write our code to that spec. But the library doesn't know it's just going to return a JS value, which is going to be the appropriate type. So this JS value here is, in fact, a JS object that is the type, that is this uh, the type of object that's stored in this variable for this specific application. But as far as the library is concerned, it's just returning a JS value, which could be any of the six types. We could have a JSON string that on the top level is an array. We could have a JSON string that's literally just a number. It could return a number. We could have a JSON string that just says false. This is all valid JSON. So it could be any of those six types. But we know that we have a, an object so when we take that parsed, we have this syntax that's part of the library, slash, and then a key. And that's going to tr uh, look at parsed, treat it as an object. If it is one, if it is a JS object, this is going to give us the value as a JS value that's at that key. So this will return a JS value if this is in fact an object and in fact has this key, it's going to return a JS value. And then we get to use one of the other powerful parts of this library. We have this as method. Dot as, and as takes a type parameter just like our data structures take type parameters. As is going to take a type parameter and interpret this value uh, and convert this value to that Scala value that we give it. So if I get the value at message, I have the string success as a JS value. And then I hit it with the as string. And I say, hey, you, I know you are a string because I read the documentation of the API I'm using. I know you're a string. So convert yourself, convert to a JSON, uh, sorry, a Scala string. Convert to a, J a Scala string. I'm going to store that in a string variable, and now I can do all the magical string stuff that I know how to do in Scala. We're in, we're outside of the world of J JSON at that point. We're in the world of Scala, and we can start just writing Scala code to handle this string and do whatever we need to do with this string. Same with the timestamp. We'll do it as long. Get that as a Scala long, and then we can do anything we can do with these uh, these integer values along here, but still a whole number value in Scala. We can work with that number. And this as method is quite powerful. If you give it any of, uh, I shouldn't say any, but a lot of the built-in Scala types, this, uh, this library has implementations to know how to work with those types. So the library has some implementation to work with Scala maps, and it's going to try to convert my keys to strings and my values to strings in this case. So I'm going to access the ISS, the, key, the value at ISS position as a JS value. And I could say slash latitude slash longitude and get those values separately. Or I can just get the whole map. I can say, hey, library, do you know how to convert this thing to a map? Could try to convert it to a map of string to string. And as long as, I, as long as the API is following its own documentation and sending me an object of string to string, I can convert that to that Scala type, get this as a map of string to strings, and then start working it with it like that. 
Now all of my values from this JSON are in my Scala values. I can just start working in Scala now with these values. This as method, the library does have to implement these for these types. It has to know what to do with these types. So if you try to do dot as, say something like store, it's not going to work. Uh, if you use dot as with your custom types, the library will not work because it doesn't know how to convert your types to JSON. So for the lecture question, you're implementing how to convert your type to JSON and from JSON. The library has no idea about your type in it, and there's no magic with this one. It can't figure out how to, uh, how to convert your types in a convenient way. Oh, okay. I ran away from my slides. It happens. Okay, so let's look at another example of writing JSON. Let's look at the reverse of what we just saw. Let's say we have the information that we need and we want to convert this to a JSON string. So if I have the timestamp, the message, and the location from uh, values that I want to put in a JSON string, let's add these to a data structure and convert that data structure to a JSON string. So here, what I ultimately want is a map of string to JS value. What I want to output is an object, a JSON object. So if I create a map of string to JS value, populate that with all of the information I want to represent, I can use this JSON from the library, this JSON.stringify of that map as a JS value, and I can uh, then that'll convert it to a JSON <coughs> string. So the magic happened. Uh, I shouldn't. Uh, not magic here, but uh, what the what does all the work here is this JSON dot to JSON method. That's going to take whatever type we get, and again, it has to be a known type known to the library. So we give it a basic Scala type. We can use our map strings, uh, ints, longs, doubles. It's going to know how to convert any of those types into JS values. And when we have a JS value, we can call stringify on it to convert it to a JSON string. So J JS value can always be turned into a JSON string in the proper format. So we'll start uh, by creating this map, string to JS value, with our three keys in it. And our keys have to map to JS values. So we want to convert each value that we have into a JS value. So JSON to JSON, get all these as JS values, my timestamp, my message, and my location, which was a map of string to string. The to JSON method, okay, map, string, and string, these are all types that the library knows about. It's going to convert that to a JS value. I have these three JS values. I throw them in my map of string to JS value. Convert that whole map, map, string, JS value. The library knows about all these types. Convert that whole thing to a JS value and stringify that thing. And then we have our, our JSON string. Then we have our JSON string formatted uh, from these values, created from these values. So we're leveraging polymorphism, working through this JS value class to be able to get our JSON functionality. Uh, that JSON, this is something we took for granted in Python and JavaScript, where we could just mix types in our data structures. JSON, uh, Python and JavaScript were just like, yeah, that's OK. You can do that. Scala doesn't allow it. Scala is enforcing this strong typing. We have to have some way of handling these situations if we want to be compatible with JSON, which we do. 
or else we can't really do a whole lot on the internet uh, if we're getting these JSON strings. So we have to have some way to parse these and handle these data structures with mixed types. And this is our answer. We'll have a JS value class, code to JS value as our base class, then uh, leverage polymorphism to be able to handle six different types using the same base class. They all extend that same base class. So we pulled in a new library, this, uh, this J, uh, JSON play library. We pulled this in and we started using it. So before we can start using it, we have to download it, we have to link it to our project. So to do that, we're gonna add that to our Maven file. I'm not gonna show an example here, though I realize I have it in the examples repo, so you can always just get it from there. But if I didn't do that, what we do is take this Maven file, which would only have Scala tests at this point. It's all, all you've needed for the lecture questions up to this point. You would take this Maven file and find a new dependency and paste it in here with your other dependency. And you'd find the dependency that, that, uh, that dependency for the uh, JSON play library. Then you go to your sidebar, go to Maven, refresh, or a pop-up will come up that says, hey, we detected changes in your POM file. Would you like to import those changes? You just click, yeah, import them. Uh, but you'll get those dependencies through your POM file. And there's this very convenient website. Oops. The Maven repository that has all these dependencies in there. There are millions of libraries hosted on the site and they give you that XML for each dependency where you can just paste it in your POM and now, bam, you're using that library now. You can use that in your project. So I'll go to that in a bit. Oh yeah, we're in the lecture question. So yeah, I'll go to there right now. So if I wanted to get this library, what we do is go to the Maven repository, go to the search bar, and go, what did he call that library in lecture? He called it play JSON or JSON play, whatever. And there it is. Find a compiled version of this library, compiled for Scala 2.12, very important if you're looking for libraries. I'll just take the latest version, that's 2.12, and it gives me the dependency right there. It even copies it to my clipboard. As soon as I click it, it doesn't even make me do control C. Uh, so you can get any library that's in this repository, which is 16.4 million. I was not exaggerating when I said millions. 16.4 million libraries that you can go and, and work with. If you wanna do if anything to your heart's content, machine learning is a hot topic these days. Let's type machine learning and get a whole bunch of Spark really machine learning? Oh, pr Spark Project ML library. Oh, that's something different. Um, if I can get all kinds of libraries for pretty much whatever you can dream up. Uh, let's flow server. Uh, I'm not gonna mess around with it. But, uh, but yeah, there's all kinds of libraries there. Uh, I highly encourage, if you wanna just play around with things, uh, find some interesting libraries, read the documentation, and just use them in some side projects. Um, there's a lot out there for you, a lot available without having to code everything from scratch. There's a lot out there that, that's just freely available. Just open source software is everywhere these days. Uh, take advantage of that. Not always for your assignments if it's doing the assignment for you, of course, I'll have to put that disclaimer, but on your side projects, go out there and use it all. Uh, for this, I usually don't show the bonus slide, uh, but I'll show it today. For the testing uh, for today's lecture question, there's always a lot of confusion when I throw out a JSON lecture question. So I 
throw out the testing so you can test locally. You don't have to submit to Autolab and just get test failed. Uh, you can run your own tests. My test is very, very similar to this one uh, that, that's on Autolab. So run, your, run this test, make sure you're passing this, and then submit. You should be okay with it. The biggest mistake I, I see on this lecture question is calling to string instead of as string. If you're using to string right there, you're wrong, and you're going to have a frustrating time. To string does almost, uh, when it's a string specifically, uh, actually, I'm in the wrong. It's a writing JSON. Uh, to string, they give you to string this one right here instead of stringify. Um, no, it is here. Sorry. Uh, if you two string this instead of a string, I was right the first time. Shouldn't have doubted myself. Two string is going to convert that to a JSON string. A JSON string contains the double quotes around the string. If you use as string, it converts it to a Scala string, which will strip the quotes from the JSON formatted string, which has quotes. It'll strip those quotes and store those in a string. This is very painful to, to debug. I saw it, saw, seen a lot in office hours. You have the quotes. Everything's completely, perfectly working and functional, except you have quotes here and no quotes here. You look at them. They look identical. What's the difference? Well, it's because you have the quotes there. So make sure you're using a string and not to string here. Just my one big word of caution. I've seen it too many times. I've seen too much frustrated frustration from students on that one, so I want to point that one out. All right. Any other questions? All right, the T's and I will walk around and uh, answer some questions. Have a little bit shorter lecture today. With that, good luck on everything. Have a good weekend. I'll see you Monday, and I'll see you walking around right now.